national. Yes. Good morning. Um, can we start? Please? Okay. Please? Good morning. Uh, welcome in the uh, second day of uh, our Winter College. I hope uh, everybody is here. Uh, we will continue today with uh, uh, our uh, presentations. Uh, in the morning we will have two lectures. Uh, is uh, the first basic principles of photothermal techniques and their applications. Uh, we'll present uh, uh, Professor Ernesto Marin Moraes from Instituto Politecnico Nacional Mexico. Uh, and uh, then uh, we will have, after coffee break, the uh, second lecture of Professor uh, Colin Shepard is confocal microscopy and super resolution and phase contrast microscopy. Uh, then uh, we will have the lunch break at uh, um, half past 12 and then we will have starting with 2 o'clock the experimental session for, for hands-on and uh, I will try to pay attention uh, about uh, the schedule. Um, for the person, it's about group one, two, three. Uh, I advise you to take the lunch in Adriatico uh, guest house because uh, they, uh, they, these groups uh, will have uh, experimental session there. It's about uh, uh, in computer lab. Uh, it's about low cost microscope automatization, hardware, and embedded software development, and. Uh, there are also uh, another groups there, the, so they, as it is written uh, on the program, you have to be there with 10 minutes before two. Be careful. Then uh, you will have to come for a poster session. Everybody will have to put their posters uh, at the lunch time or after lunch time because uh, we'll, we will start the evaluation of all posters. So the groups one to three uh, will come by walk from Adriatico because there is no shuttle after. Yes. Okay, sorry, four, five, six. Yes, that groups, I made a mistake. One to three will be in my ML lab, okay? Uh, so you will come by walk to uh, be here for a poster session. So, uh, two o'clock experimental session in Adriatico, and then starting with four is uh, the poster session. And four groups, one to three, they are experiments up in the ML. It's about Abe diffraction with Umberto, it's a continuation. Then is about uh, a part uh, with uh, experimental session digital locking photothermal shadow graph method and uh, laser induced breakdown spectroscopy. So 
For all information about experimental session, you have to contact uh, Umberto. The guys who didn't attend this uh, um, sessions uh, are uh, required to address to Umberto to be able to do these uh, activities, but it's the last chance to have these activities. And uh, now, with your permission, I will invite Professor Ernesto Marin to make his presentation. Please. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you, the organizing committee, for inviting me. And thank you for your presence. I will tell you about a group of experimental methods that are based in the common principle of periodically heating a sample with light and measurement of the induced temperature changes. And on the use of this measurement for material characterization. Let me introduce me be before going into matter. I am from Mexico. Mexico is not only a country of a great ancestral culture, tequila, mariachis, and so on. There are also several uh, uh, high uh, education universities. Uh, and I am from one of them, from the National Polytechnic Institute. This is the greatest uh, technological university in Mexico, and in particular, I am in a research center in which there are three graduate uh, programs, two of them are for physics and mathematics uh, education. They are uh, virtual distance uh, programs uh, focused to, to the uh, preparation of, of teachers. And there is a, a, a multi a, a program in advanced technology. This is a multidisciplinary program with different research uh, lines for example, nanotechnology, biomaterials, instrumentation, and, and there is a phototermal techniques laboratory uh, in which I do uh, my work. Uh, the, our graduate program is evaluated by the Mexican Council of Science and Technology as a program of international competence. Uh, and as a consequence, the students of this program uh, can have access to scholarships from different uh, institutions of Mexico. I will divide my, my, my presentation in four main points. The f in the first one, sorry, I will tell you about the photoacoustic technique this was the first developed photothermal uh, method. Then I will tell you about the physics behind uh, these techniques. Uh, then I will describe some different photothermal techniques. And at the end, I will tell you about some applications in the fields of spectroscopy, uh, measurement of thermal properties, depth profiling, mic microscopy, etc. The photoacoustic effect was discovered by Alexander Graham Bell while working in the photophone. The photophone was a, a device with which Bell tried to transmit information at large distances using sunlight. The experimental setup consists basically in a, a mirror, mirror coupled to a loudspeaker uh, so that the, the reflected light uh, can be modulated by voice and telephone receiver. Uh, with these instruments, Bell was capable to transmit information uh, to distances about uh, 200 uh, meters, approximately. Changing the telephone receiver uh, circuit by a hearing tube with an enclosed sample, Bell discovered 
that uh, when light is shining onto the sample, uh, a song uh, is produced. Um, and he described uh, this effect in, in, in this publication. Uh, in other experiments, Bell discovered that the photoacoustic effect can be attributed to the absorption of light by, by a sample. Uh, he did the following experiment. Uh, he modulated uh, the intensity of a light beam using a chopper uh, and directed the light onto a sample enclosed in a recipient connected to to, to a hearing tube. And, and he heard a song when light uh, is focused onto the sample. Uh, using the, the so-called spectrophone, uh, Bell discovered that the sound intensity uh, is changed when the wavelength of the light uh, also changes. Uh, uh, so that uh, the, the effect is uh, attributed to the optical absorption uh, of light by immaterial. This is a selective, uh, a color selective process. Uh, each material absorbs, as you know, electromagnetic radiation in different uh, forms. You can do a, a similar experiment in your, in your home using a stethoscope. Yes? Uh, all what you need is a, a light bulb driven by alternating current, uh, for, example, for example, the, the line current, uh, and a stethoscope. Uh, if you put the, the stethoscope head uh, close to the, to the light source, you will hear a, a sound like, mm, and if you chop it, the, the light, uh, this sound will be modulated at the chopping frequency. There are uh, several similar experiments that you can perform with a very simple uh, apparatus. Uh, some of them are described in these uh, articles uh, that are uh, published in, in teaching journals, such as American Journal of Physics, etc. Uh, what is the cause of, of this effect? Uh, when intensity modulated light is absorbed by the, the diaphragm that closes the, the, the stethoscope head, uh, this diaphragm is heated periodically. And, and the, the heat is transmitted to a thin layer of the air enclosed in, in the stethoscope head. Uh, this thin layer of fire will expand and contract following the light modulation frequency and act as a piston on the rest of the enclosed air so that an acoustical wave is produced. Uh, there are uh, four main mechanisms involved in, in the generation of the photoacoustic signal. The first one is the absorption of light energy. And, and this process depends on the optical properties of the sample. Then there is a process of energy conversion. Uh, the absorbed uh, light energy is converted into heat. And this process uh, depends on several properties depending on the kind of material. But we can define a conversion efficiency of, uh, for this process. Uh, this is the ratio of the absorbed energy, the, of the produced heat and the absorbed light energy. Uh, then we have a, a heat diffusion process that depends on thermal properties of the sample. We will see later uh, which thermal properties are these. And there are also some wave produced that depends on the elastic uh, properties of the, of the sample. And this is the motivation uh, for using this effect for material characterization. You can design uh, an experiment uh, to, to measure some of, of these properties or physical processes in which these properties are, 
are involved. I will do a, a raw estimation of orders of magnitude. Suppose, suppose that the, the power of the, of the light pulse is 0 0.1 milliwatt. And, and the, the duration of, of the pulse is 5 milliseconds. milliseconds. Uh, so you can calculate uh, the, the energy uh, absorbed by the sample and using the, the, the laws of thermodynamics, you can calculate the temperature increase that is produced by the absorption of this energy during this time. And, and you obtain a value in the order of many kelvins. Uh, with this uh, uh, value of the temperature increase and, and considering the, the gas as a, an ideal gas, uh, you can also calculate the generator pressure uh, uh, increase and you become approximately the end to the minus two Pascal. So that we can say that we are uh, within the, 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 the range of, of the audible music in, in a graph of pressure between uh, versus frequency. Yes? We are situated here for, for these valves. Uh, these small uh, values uh, are the, the motivation uh, on how to detect uh, on, on, or the motivation for developing methods for the, the detection or for the, the measurement of these small uh, quantities. We see later. Uh, several scientists of the 19th century were interested in, in the photoacoustic effect. Uh, but due to the absence of, of um, uh, light sources like the, the lasers or um, uh, electronic methods to detect uh, these pressure, pressure variations uh, substituting the, 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 the air, uh, the, the, the effect remained uh, forgetting. Uh, there were two attempts uh, well, uh, Rongen discovered that the photoacoustic effect uh, can be also produced in, in gases. And this is the, 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 the fundamental for um, uh, applications in spectroscopy uh, in, in, in gas materials that were developed by Bengerov and Luft uh, in the 20th uh, century. The 1970s can be considered the, the years of the rediscovery of the photoacoustic effect, mainly due to the work of Rosenway, Alan Rosenway, in, in the Bell Laboratories in, in the USA, that reported the first theoretical model describing the, the, the effect, and, and, and which reported the, the first application of the effect, mainly related to spectroscopy uh, in solid materials or in condensed uh, matter samples, solids and, and liquids. Since then, uh, there is a, a growth in the uh, applications of the photoacoustic effect uh, in different fields of research. This is a graph from 212 uh, showing the the, the increasing number of, of papers produced in different kinds of, of, of applications. This is only about the, the photoacoustic technique. Uh, if, if we add here the, the applications of the other phototermal techniques, these values will be sure uh, increase. This is a schema of the a typical experimental setup uh, for applying the, the photoacoustic effect. Uh, you have a, a source of light, uh, for example, a, a lamp, a, a white la a light a lamp, 
a monochromator, if you want to, to do a wavelength resolved experiments, a, a chopper or, or another kind of, of modulator, of light modulator. A, the modulated light is focused a, onto the sample that is enclosed in a photoacoustic cell. The photoacoustic cell is similar to the head of the, of the stethoscope that I, I showed before. A, a, a photoacoustic signal a, is generated and it is measured using a microphone enclosed, a, also enclosed in the, in the sample. And, and the signal provided by the microscope uh, is measured using uh, equipment that can help to measure the small valves of, of, the, of, of, of the pressure and temperature that are produced in the, inside the cell. The, this kind of instruments uh, are known as phase sensitive uh, detection systems or simple locking amplifier, LIA. Uh, this is a, a heart of a photoacoustic experiments. Uh, uh, this, this kind of, 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 of instruments uh, measure only the, the signal that is, produ that is produced at the light modulation frequency and filter a, a all the noise that is together with this, with, with this signal. Uh, there are very expensive, uh, no, not very, but expensive locking amplifiers, but you can also construct a, a very inexpensive one using, for example, uh, developed uh, 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 arrays uh, such as FPGA or uh, data acquisition cards etc. And you, can, you can do the, the measurement in, in the photoacoustic experiment uh, as a function of the light energy or, or light wavelength uh, for, for spectroscopic applications. Uh, you can also do measurements at the fixed wave, wavelength and, and varying the, the light modulation frequency uh, when you want to determine transport properties, uh, for example, uh, thermal properties of materials, but you can also do time-resolved experiments uh, to, to monitor the, the time evolution of different uh, processes, for example, a photocatalytic process, as shown here. Okay. I, I will describe now uh, briefly the the, the principles of, the, of, of this testing. Uh, the first uh, process involved in the, in the generation of the photoacoustic signal was the optical absorption. Optical absorption under certain conditions is described by the lambert bird law. Uh, uh, the, the intensity of the transmitted light uh, at a given distance from the sample surface uh, is given by the product of the intensity at the, at the surface of the sample and the uh, exponential of minus the product of the absorption coefficient, beta, and, and, the, and the distance at which this intensity is, is measured. The optical absorption coefficient is proportional to the uh, concentration of the absorbing species in, in a given sample. Uh, this allows, for example, application in which the concentration of, of a solute in, in a solution uh, uh, must be determined. Then we, we have a process of light energy into heat conversion. Uh, the amount of heat generated uh, per volume unit of the sample in an element of thickness uh, dx at a given depth, x, is given by the following equation here. Eta is the quantum efficient for heating. So the quotient between producer heat and incident energy. R is the optical reflection coefficient. 
uh, is the light intensity. This is the derivative of the, of the light intensity. Uh, and uh, x is the, the, the coordinate. Yes? Then we have a, a process of heat conduction through the sample and its surroundings. There are three modes of heat transfer. Wherever temperature difference exists, there is a heat transfer from the uh, hot to the, to the cold uh, region. And there are three modes of, of heat conduction. One is the convection. Uh, in its simplest form, uh, natural convection, this process can be described by the Newton law of cooling. Uh, that states that the head flux density, also the, the, the energy per unit time and, and surface uh, area unit, uh, is equal to the product of the head transfer coefficient and the temperature difference between the two regions through uh, which uh, heat transfer uh, takes place. Uh, in the case of radiation, the head flux density is described by the Stefan Boltzmann law of, 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 of radiation. In this law, sigma is the Stefan Boltzmann constant. E is the, the spectral emissivity of the material surface. Uh, T0 is the, the ambient temperature, for example, and T is the temperature of the other medium. Uh, if, the, if the temperature difference is very small uh, when compared with the ambient temperature, you can do a tailored development of, of this equation around ambient temperature and you linearize uh, the Stefan Boltzmann law. And you can so introduce, uh, when, compa when, when you compare with the uh, Newton law of, of cooling, we can, you, you can introduce a radiation head transfer coefficient given by this equation. Uh, the third mechanism is heat conduction that is described by the Fourier law. Uh, the, the heat flux density by conduction uh, is the product uh, with a minus sign of the thermal conductivity of the sample and the temperature gradient. In the case of one-dimensional uh, heat conduction, and for homogeneous and isotropic samples, you can approximate the gradient by the quotient of the, of the temperature difference and, for example, the, the length of, of the sample. And in this way, uh, you can also introduce a, a, a heat transfer coefficient for conduction as the quotient of the thermal conductivity and the uh, thickness of the, of the sample. If you use the, the, the Fourier's law to calculate the, the head flux across a, a sample of thermal conductivity K, thickness L, and cross-sectional area A, you can define the thermal resistance of the material uh, as the quotient of the, of the length of the sample the thermal conductivity and the, and the thermal conductivity and area product. Uh, this is often known as the Ohm's law for thermal conduc uh, conduction because it's very similar to the Ohm's law uh, of the electricity. Uh, the, the inverse of the uh, thermal resistance multiplied by the surface area, uh, excuse me, uh, you, you can define a, a, thermal, a, a, transfer, a heat transfer coefficient for the processes of convection and, and radiation. Here is an error. Here must be radiation. Yes? And, and the quotient uh, between the heat transfer coefficient for radiation and convection and the heat transfer uh, coefficient for conduction is known as the Biot's number. And it describes the fraction of material thermal resistance that opposed to convection radiation uh, 
his losses. If you combine the Fourier's law of conduction with the energy, energy con uh, conservation law, uh, we can obtain the heat diffusion equation. Uh, in its homogeneous form, the, the heat diffusion equation is this one. Uh, here is the, the Laplacian of the temperature field. Alpha is the, the thermal diffusivity of the material. This is the quotient between the thermal conductivity and the product of the density and the specific heat. And this product is defined at the specific heat capacity of the sample. Uh, and this is the line derivative of the, of the temperature. If you plot the, the thermal conductivity as a function of the thermal diffusivity uh, for different materials, you observe that, for example, for condensed matter samples, all values are grouped uh, around a stretch line whose slope is uh, uh, approximately the specific heat capacity of each materials. In other words, for condensed, for, for, uh, so the same occurs for, ga for gases, yes? And, and this means that the specific, the, the specific heat capacity is almost a constant parameter for matter. And its value is approximately 3, three uh, times 10 to the 6 uh, joule cubic meter Kelvin to the minus 1. Uh, this is a consequence of the Dulong and Petit rule for the molar heat capacity of solids. No? That states that, that this quantity is nearly a constant parameter for temperatures near ambient temperature and below the device temperature of, of solids. Oh, sorry. Okay, now, uh, suppose that we have a, an isotropic and homogeneous Semi-infinite solid. Semi-infinite means that you can neglect what happens at the uh, uh, back surface of, of the sample. Uh, and uh, suppose that this solid is heated with light that is uh, absorbed, absorbed only uh, at the surface of the, of the solid. Uh, and that the heating is uniform so that uh, you can try the problem as a one-dimensional problem, yes? Uh, I call this a, a beautiful sample, okay? With all good properties that can have a, a sample uh, uh, to ask as a, as a model. Uh, if you want to calculate the temperature distribution across the sample, you must solve the uh, heat diffusion equation uh, given before. Uh, with the properly boundary condition. Uh, the boundary condition states that the heat flux produced at the sample surface will be proportional to the uh, optical energy absorbed by, by the sample. Uh, if you suppose that the temperature uh, uh, field uh, can follow the time dependence of the heating, you can do a, a variable separation in this equation, and you transform this partial derivative equation in an ordinary uh, differential equation of second order with constant coefficient, a very uh, simple uh, equation. And the boundary uh, equation becomes uh, uh, this for the uh, spatial uh, part of the temperature field. Here is also an error, sorry, uh, this t uh, must be deleted here. No? This is only the, the, the spatial part of the temperature field. And the solution of, 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 uh, of this equation is this one. Yeah? And here, where e is the light intensity, epsilon is another thermal parameter. This is the thermal effusivity. The thermal effusivity is the a, a square root of the product of specific heat and thermal conductivity. 
eh, Q is eh, given by the quotient of 1 plus E is the, the complex uh, unit, and the so-called uh, thermal diffusion length that is given by the square root of two, be, two times the thermal diffusivity uh, divided by the angular modulation frequency. Uh, it, this, this equation has the same form uh, as an attenuated wave so that uh, it is uh, known as a thermal wave equation. Uh, and as you see, there are two, seven, two uh, uh, thermal properties uh, involved in this equation, the thermal effusivity and the thermal diffusivity, so that measurement of, the, of this temperature uh, field can allow us to determine the thermal properties of the, of the material. In, in, in the thermal wave equation, we can define an amplitude given by this term and a phase given by the sum of these two terms. Okay. Uh, the, the, if you plot the, the, this amplitude as a function of distance, uh, you have an exponential function. And the thermal diffusion length uh, can be defined as the, the distance from the sample surface at which the amplitude of the temperature wave is reduced e times, okay? Uh, in other words, the distance at which the thermal wave amplitude uh, is reduced in 60% uh, approximately. Uh, the, the thermal wave wavelength is defined as the product of this thermal diffusion length and 2p, uh, so that uh, in one thermal wave wavelength, the thermal wave is almost completely uh, attenuated. Uh, they are very attenuated waves. The, and this is very important for, for several uh, applications. Uh, in this process, you have you have an alternating heating. In electricity, uh, for, for direct current, you define an electrical resistance. But for when, when you use alternating current, you define a thermal impedance. Uh, in, in heat transport, uh, of course, the same. Uh, for stationary heating, uh, you define a, a thermal resistance that was defined before. and for, for, for alternating heating, as in this case, you can define a, a thermal impedance of the sample. And the thermal impedance depends on the thermal effusivity of the sample and on the <coughs> sorry, light modulation uh, frequency. You can also define a, a velocity of the wave. And the velocity of the wave depends also on thermal diffusivity and the light modulation frequency, so that you can change the velocity by changing the, the light modulation frequency. At, 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 at the interface between two regions with different thermal properties, you can define a reflection and transmission coefficients for the thermal waves. And you can demonstrate that for normal incidence uh, of the thermal wave, uh, these coefficients depend on the ratio of the thermal effusivities of the of the of one materials. Yeah? So that the, the the thermal effusivity It's a, 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 para, a, a parameter that define, that, that describes phenomena that takes place at the sample surface or at interface between two regions. Uh, there are several experimental phenomena that, uh, whose interpretation is given in terms of thermal, of thermal effusivity. For example, uh, if you touch a, a metallic object, and, and an object uh, made of wood uh, during a, a, a very short time interval, you will feel that the metallic object 
is colder than the, the, the other object. Uh, but both uh, objects are at the same ambient temperature. Yes? And, and this phenomena is explained by the thermal effusivity, as well as you can calculate the time during which you can touch a very hot object uh, using also physics that is related to a thermal effusivity concept. Talking about orders of magnitude, uh, for a typical solid material, you can calculate the, the, the wavelength of a thermal wave uh, and you become approximately a, a, some a dozen of micrometers. Some micrometers you, you can obtain for a typical solid material and at a modulation frequency of 10 kilohertz. Uh, the, the, the wave velocity for at this frequency becomes a, approximately some uh, meters uh, per, sec per seconds. Uh, for a comparison, the wavelength of acoustic waves at the same frequency uh, is about one centimeter. To obtain acoustical waves uh, of, with, with this very short wavelength, uh, you must have uh, frequencies uh, larger than some megahertz. Uh, and this technically is a very uh, difficult uh, task. Uh, we will see later uh, why we can use this uh, fact uh, to do uh, a kind of microscopy using uh, thermal waves. The thermal wave concept is not new. Uh, Fourier, in his classical and very known work, uh, the analytical theory of, of heat, uh, described uh, the thermal wave for the first time. And he and Poisson uh, proposed that you can use the thermal wave to characterize the thermal properties uh, of the air crust of soils, for example. Uh, I don't, uh, this kind of experiments, and, and this kind of experiments is often done uh, for thermal properties characterization of, of soils. Uh, if you measure the, the temperature at different depths inside the soil using a thermometer, uh, during one day, uh, you obtain a, an almost a sinusoidal behavior uh, that can be fitted with the thermal wave equation uh, to obtain the thermal diffusivity of, of, soil, of soils in a straightforward uh, way. Bell, uh, uh, Bell, uh, Fourier uh, uh, published his work in 1822, but, but the, the theory was first developed approximately 20 years before. Uh, Fourier uh, sent uh, his work uh, to publication to the uh, French Academy of Science, but the reference of his article were, among others, Legendre and Laplace. Fourier was a, a guy very involved in politics, and, and his work was rejected one and one more time by, by, by the referees, and finally, uh, Fourier decided to publish his work itself. He, he printed his, his work and he published uh, the work. I, I do always this comment to my students. Uh, don't worry if your work uh, is rejected for publication. You have always the, the possibility to publish it yourself or to send the the the, the word to, to journals such as some open access journal uh, that can publish your, your, your word. Uh, but remember that the, the Forest book is uh, still one of the masterpieces of the scientific 
leadership. At the same epoch uh, of Fourier's work, Armstrong developed a method for the measurement of the thermal diffusivity of a solid in the form of a bar. And, and the experiment is very similar uh, to the soil uh, experiment described before. You have a solid in the form of bar, you have a, a periodical heating element uh, in one strength of the bar, and you can measure the temperature at different distances. And you also obtain a temperature oscillation uh, whose amplitude and, and, and phase uh, change with the, with, the, with the distance. So that uh, we assist today to a rediscovering of 19th century uh, physics by, by modern science as occurred also in other fields of research. Okay. Uh, before I, I, uh, I talked about uh, a beautiful sample uh, with superficial light absorption. In the case that the, the light energy is absorbed, absorbed through the, the bulk of the sample, uh, the temperature field will also depend on the optical properties of the sample. Okay? Uh, for example, the, the optical absorption coefficient. Because the optical absorption coefficient depends on the color of the, of the light, uh, you can do a, a kind of optical spectroscopy uh, by detecting uh, this thermal wave. Okay. We have seen that thermal wave can be detected uh, using a microphone uh, or directly using a, a, a thermometer, yes? But besides this uh, wave of detection, we have another wave, way uh, to detect thermal waves. Uh, when you hit a material, the temperature change, but also all material parameters and all materials of the medium surrounding the sample depend on temperature, so that you can use the detection of, of, of these uh, changes in these parameters to indirectly uh, measure the, the, the temperature. Uh, for example, you, you can modulate with heating the refractive index of, of the sample uh, and, and detect the changes in the refractive index uh, to measure temperature. Uh, this will be the, the, the theme of, of another presentation tomorrow and next week. Uh, you can also measure the, the, the infrared radiation that is emitted by, by, by the heated uh, sample using, for example, thermographic cameras or, or other kinds of infrared uh, detectors uh, and, and so on. This is uh, one example of a photothermal technique. Uh, when you hit uh, the surface of a sample, uh, the, the, the air, air in, in contact with the sample will be also heated. Yeah? And, and the temperature becomes different at different distances for, from the surface. The refractive index also changes. So that if you shine onto the sample another uh, light beam, uh, the intensity of this light beam will be changed due to the changes in the refractive uh, index. This is the, the basic of, of one technique known as a mirage effect or beam deflection. Uh, this is an illustration of the technique. Uh, this is the sample. This is the, the heating light beam. Uh, this is uh, an illustration of the changes of the refractive index. And with another uh, light beam, known as the probe beam, you can monitor these uh, temperature uh, changes. This is an, an experiment in which uh, the probe beam is divided in several beams. And this is... Oh. 
how can I play the, the video? Okay, I will show you tomorrow this, this, this video. Uh, this is the, 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 an image of, the, of these light beams uh, projected on a, onto a screen uh, and they are deflected by the heating in the central ratio of the, of the, of the sample. Yeah? I will tell you uh, now about some application of, of the photothermal techniques. Uh, the first application that I want to describe is a photoacoustic spectroscopy and the possibility to do depth profiling uh, in this kind of, of applications. Uh, here, no. Uh, Yes, here is the, the photoacoustic spectrum of a sample of neodymium oxide, yeah? showing some characteristic peaks. And, and this is the photoacoustic spect, uh, spectrum of holmium oxide, showing also the characteristic absorption bands. Suppose that you have a two-layer sample composed on the top by a neodymium oxide and and at the bottom by olmium oxide, okay? Uh, you will do photoacoustic spectroscopy in the following way. You hit the sample uh, on the top, from, 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 from the top uh, at a certain frequency and you measure the, the photoacoustic signal. When the, the, the light modulation frequency is such that the thermal diffusion length uh, becomes inside the, the top region of the sample, you will obtain a photoacoustic spectrum similar to that obtained in, in a single sample of the same material. Yeah? Then you can repeat the experiment at a lower frequency so that the thermal diffusion length becomes higher, uh, uh, so that the, the thermal wave uh, propagates also into the, the lower layer of the sample. And as a result, you will obtain that uh, some uh, peaks uh, will appear in, in the spectrum, yeah? that are characteristics from the uh, bottom layer, from the olmium oxide sample. And if you make the, the, the light modulation frequency uh, more lower, the, the thermal uh, the thermal wave will diffuse more and more into, into the, the whole sample yeah? and, and you obtain an spectrum that is the combination of both the neodymium oxide and the olmium oxide uh, uh, contribution. There is a method using the, the phase of the photoacoustic signal uh, that is known as a phase resolve it analysis uh, with which you can resolve the spectrum of the two components from the obtained photoacoustic spectrum without the necessity of changing the, the, the modulation frequency and, and of repeating the experiment at different frequencies to obtain this, this, this result. Uh, so uh, I have shown that, that you can do a, a, a photothermal spectroscopy and you can resolve uh, things that are uh, below the, the surface of, of the sample in a straightforward way. Uh, you will hear uh, about more spectroscopic application of phototermal techniques in the lectures of Professor Marcano and Professor Franco uh, during the next days of this, uh, of this school. A thermal characterization, uh, how can we do a thermal characterization using thermal wave? This is again the thermal wave equation. The thermal wave equation. Uh, uh, and suppose that the, that the temperature field is measured at a given distance L 
uh, from the sample surface. Yeah? Uh, this is the, the amplitude of the thermal wave, and this is the phase of the thermal wave. Uh, you can see that if we plot the amplitude, the, the logarithm of the product of the amplitude and the square root of the modulation frequency as a function of the square root of the frequency, or if you plot the phase as a function of the square root of the frequency, you become a, a straight line whose slope uh, depends on the thermal diffusivity of the material. This is, the, this is known as the slope method. Okay? You can measure the amplitude and the phase. Uh, you can do this, these plots. Well, no. You can do these plots, and from the slope, you can determine the thermal diffusivity is the, the, the distance is well known. Yes? But you don't always measure directly the temperature. Sometimes you measure the temperature indirectly. Uh, and you introduce a proportionality factor between the measured, measured quantity and the temperature field. And this uh, parameter that is known as the instrumental factor uh, of the experiment can be frequency dependent. So that to use this method, uh, you need some normalization procedures or some experimental artifacts uh, to, to, to determine the, the thermal diffusivity. But looking at this equation, you can see that the same dependence that exists for the modulation frequency uh, is given by, by, for the length, for the length. So that if you plot the logarithms of the amplitude as a function of the length or the phase at the function, as a function of the length, you also will obtain stretch lines uh, with the slopes that depend on the thermal diffusivity. And if the modulation frequency is well known, you can determine the thermal diffusivity of the of the material. This is the, the, the principle be behind uh, uh, the main methods uh, developed for thermal diffusivity measurement uh, of materials. For example, the, the the Fourier based method that I showed before uh, use the, the slope method. No? Here are the temperature oscillations as a function of, of time, uh, taking at different depths uh, below the, the surface of the, of the air. Uh, and you see how the, the amplitude of the thermal wave uh, is reduced with increasing depth. No? And you can also see a, a, a phase lag between the different waves. So the, the minimum is at different time positions for each wave. For, for each distance, you can measure the amplitude of the wave, the peak-to-peak -peak value, and you can plot this peak-to-peak -peak value as a function of depth, and you become a stretch line. Uh, well, here is only four points, but uh, it's not easy to, to do these measurements inside the soil, but you obtain a stretch line, and from the slope of, the, of, of this line, you can obtain the value of the thermal diffusivity of the, of the, of the sample. This is a, another experiment a, proposed for thermal characterization, a, in this case, of liquid samples. Uh, in these experiments, you have, uh, for example, a metallic foil that is heated uh, with electromagnetic, with periodical uh, electromagnetic radiation so that thermal waves are generated. Okay? Uh, and, and this metallic foil acts as a source of thermal waves. And these thermal waves can propagate uh, and can be measured using a pyroelectric sensor, a sensor uh, that gives an electric voltage when the temperature changes. 
because you have here a cavity, the method is known as a thermal wave resonator cavity or thermal wave interferometer by other authors. Uh, if you measure the, the, the real part and the imaginary part of the temperature field measured by the photopyroelectric detector, you obtain a, a behavior a, with maxima and minima that is characteristic of, of, of wave uh, interference uh, phenomena. Now, suppose that, 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 that we put a liquid sample in this recipient, okay, a, a volatile sample, so that uh, uh, the, the, the vapor uh, uh, from this sample diffuse into the, the, the cavity, the, the, the thermal wave resonator cavity, that is filled by air. Okay? You can measure the amplitude of the, photo, of the photothermal signal as a function of time. And you see that uh, you will, at, at certain times, after certain times, you will obtain a, a, a constant behavior. Uh, that means that the thermal wave resonator cavity is saturated by the liquid sample vapor. Yeah? And at this moment, you can move the, you can change the distance between the aluminum absorber and the photopyroelectric sensor, and you can monitor the pyroelectric signal as a function of length. And then you can use the slope method to measure the, the thermal uh, diffusivity. Uh, this is the result of one experiment made with hydrocarbon uh, samples. Uh, as a result, the characteristic time of these uh, graphs uh, shows a linear relationship with the number of carbon atoms in the linear chain of the hydrocarbon uh, molecule. In another application, uh, this behavior was used to propose a method uh, for the measurement of octane. In, in, uh, for example, here, uh, the thermal diffusivity uh, was measured for different mixtures of isoctane and hexane. Uh, and the thermal diffusivity is plotted as a function, as a, as a function of the motor octane number. And, and you obtain that a, a relationship between both magnitudes so that you can use the thermal diffusivity of these mixtures to define uh, an octane scale for characterizing, uh, for example, gasoline. And, and, and this is a result uh, in which uh, samples of gasoline uh, were uh, adulterated uh, with different products. And if you measure the, the characteristic time show, show it before this characteristic time, as a function of the thermal diffusivity of the samples, you obtain a conformity grid uh, and the, the values corresponding to the non-adulterated gasoline uh, uh, are inside this rectangular grid. Uh, all other values correspond to uh, adulterated uh, samples. Adulteration of gasoline is a, a great problem in, in several countries of, of, the, of the world. This is a, a, a work that was developed in, in Brazil some years before. You can also use the, the slope method to characterize the thermal properties of uh, non-conventional samples, for example, uh, very thin uh, filaments, uh, for example, spider silk. In this work, a, a group from Bilbao in Spain uh, do the following experiment. Uh, here is the, the sample. This is a, a, a spider silk uh, filament. Uh, that is located inside a cavity in which vacuum is performed uh, to eliminate uh, convection. 
that, that can affect the, the, the measurement procedure. Uh, you hit the sample with the laser, and with an infrared camera, you can measure the temperature distribution uh, as a function of the distance from the heating point along the sample. And plotting the phase of the, of the signal as a function of distance and the logarithms of the, of the signal as a function of distance, you can obtain the, the thermal diffusivity uh, in the way described it before if the, the, the light modulation frequency is, is known. You can also use uh, all optical methods to, uh, to do measurement of thermal properties of, of materials. For example, the thermal length uh, technique uh, is not only useful for, for spectroscopy, uh, but also for uh, thermal characterization of, of materials. Uh, we have uh, here we have implemented the technique using an optical microscope. Uh, in blue is the, the heating laser beam uh, that is named the, the pump beam that is focused using the, the microscope objective into a very small region of the sample. And here is another laser whose uh, wavefront is disturbed by the produced changes in the refractive index of the sample, and, and these uh, intensity changes can be measured with an optical uh, photodetector. Using this method, uh, you are able to, to, uh, to do measurements of the thermal properties of, of very thin material, for example, two-dimensional materials uh, like graphene. Uh, if you look at, at, at these graphs of the thermal length signal as a function of time, you can see that the, uh, the amplitude of, of the signal uh, uh, change with the number of uh, graphene layers in the sample. Uh, so that uh, you can use the thermal length method or similar methods to, to do maps uh, of graphene samples when you have when you have different small regions with different number of uh, graphene uh, layers these are some examples of this kind of of photothermal maps uh, they were taken using a, a modulated thermoreflectance setup uh, this is you have a heating laser and you have another laser that measures the changes in optical reflectivity of the sample that are produced by the temperature changes. And here are images taken at different modulation frequencies uh, in which we can see uh, different regions with one, two, three, and seven uh, graphene layers uh, distributed uh, across the, the sample. This is a, a typical optical reflectance setup uh, here you also have a, a pum laser beam in blue, in blue, and this is the, the probe beam. This is a, a continuous laser that in, uh, impinges on, on the sample and is reflected, and you can measure the intensity changes using a, a photo detector. Uh, this setup can be combined with a photoacoustic uh, setup to do uh, combined measurements using reflectance and using photoacoustic detection in the same experimental setup. Uh, the sample here in this uh, experiment is uh, an integrated circuit that is glued onto a, a, a piezoelectric uh, sensor uh, and and located in a, in, a, in a photothermal reflectance microscope. With the heating beam, you scan the, the sample surface, and for each point, you can measure both the photoreflectance signal and the photoacoustic signal. Uh, here, the heating is not produced by light. Uh, it is produced uh, by electrical current that 
a pass through uh, the, 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 the microchip. Uh, here, these are electrical uh, tracks. Uh, here, numbered at different electrical contacts. Uh, this contact is connected to ground and the other to a constant uh, uh, voltage uh, value. Uh, so that when you do the, the phototermal measurement, uh, you obtain these images. Uh, for example, this is a photoreflectance image, and this is a, the photoacoustic image. Uh, you, you can see the, the ratio of the track where heat uh, is dissipated. Uh, for example, here in, in red. Yeah? But in, in, the, in the photoacoustic image, we also see uh, this uh, track here. This is this track in, in the sample that is not connected to any electrical circuit. Yeah? And, and the cause of, of this, uh, that, of the, uh, uh, that, that this track appears in the photoacoustic image uh, was demonstrated using um, some mathematical modulation, uh, modulations that show that there is a, a drift current across this, this electrode and, and this can be shown by the uh, photoacoustic image, but not by the optical image of the, of the, of the sample. Here is also a, a, a photoacoustic microscope. This is the, the sensor. Uh, this is a, the, a, a PCT, a piezoelectric transducer taken from a commercial uh, buzzer. Uh, the sample is glued onto the, 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 the sensor, and you scan the surface of the sample using a laser, a modulated laser beam. And for example, this is a, an image taking, this is an optical image of a lottery ticket, this from scratch and, and win, lottery ticket, uh, of course, uh, after scratch. It. The, the surface. Yeah? But before that, we have taken the photoacoustic image. This is the amplitude image, and this is the phase image. Uh, and you can see the, the X in both images. So that photoacoustic uh, experiments uh, can be used to reveal sub superficial uh, uh, things of a given sample like, like this. Uh, these are uh, another image taken in a system composite of uh, cadmium telluride grown on cadmium sulfide and, and, and glass as a substrate. Yeah? This is an optical image and this is the photoacoustic image. Here in this sample, the cadmium sulf uh, sulfide layer is some hundreds of nanometers thick, and the cadmium telluride is some micrometer thick. So that uh, I can show here that photoacoustic uh, technique can uh, resolve structures uh, that are only some nanometer uh, thick. Uh, these are the, the, this is the, the same image, but in, in another uh, view. Okay? You can see the, the glass, the, the cadmium sulfide, and the cadmium telluride layer in the, in the image. Uh, tomorrow, I will talk to you uh, with more detail about the, fo the phototermal thermal characterization of samples and in particular about the new developed technique that is known as the shadow graph technique. You will also learn about this technique uh, in the afternoon in one of the experimental sessions. Uh, these are some institutions that support our work. Uh, and thank you, this is all. So, if there are questions.